Hi, this is Dr. Scott Young, and today we're going to do a, a repeat of a video that I did a while ago. It's from my Hope in the Last Day series, but we're actually going to bring it forward into the Nasara Jasara stuff. And I'm going to share with you how I was wrong. It's okay. I can be wrong too. Um, because I'm learning stuff every day and the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It a is able to understand the intents and thoughts of the heart. When we understand that, that point, it cuts deeply. It, it cuts between um, soul and spirit and it's, it's speaking inside of us. That was from Hebrews 4.12, by the way. Um, and, and what it's doing is, is a surgeon's scalpel with that too. Sorry, my eyes are watering a little bit. Um, and what it's doing inside of us, if we'll allow it to go there, we can find things that we don't realize are there. Now, one of the things that you got to understand about um, this particular passage that we're going to come to up to, <coughs> very famous passage, is Second Chronicles 7.14 is that it's a layer and I want you to see it as a three part layer to this. And we're going to show you the parts of the layer that are, are relevant to this. It is an end time passage that no one sees. It is a Jasara Nasara passage. No one's really seeing. And then lastly, it actually is. This is the part that I didn't catch that I sort of caught, you know, a little bit. And I kind of rejected this one. It's it's a now passage. No, and that, and that's a fascinating point because we have um, <clears throat> there's a pastor who's retired, and I don't know if he's doing much anymore. He used to be with uh, uh, Grace Fellowship in the Tulsa area of Bob Yandian, and Bob Yandian talks about um, looking at twenty verses before and twenty verses after any time. You read a scripture, good good teacher with that kind of stuff. And the reality is putting it in context. Now, we're going to do that when we talk about the context of this verse. So I'm going to bring that up here in just a second. But <clears throat> when we do this, what we've got to do is understand that there's layers. Now, sometimes the layered meaning of that is for the now sometimes it's for a future point and sometimes god's got a hidden layer that we're not really seeing there and and you've got to realize that there's there's points to that let me give you an example revelation um two and three talks about the seven churches those seven churches existed in the then time frame for john it, he was talking about the seven churches that were around the lower Asia, uh, the 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 lower European area, okay, northern Europe, uh, northern African area kind of area uh, situation with that. Then what he was talking about is he was talking about a future time frame because he was he was kind of thinking that way, but not realizing that was it. But he's also not seeing this part. But the Holy Spirit was int intimating that not only was it a future time frame of of sections of time throughout the throughout the ages, which Bob Yandian and several other ones do, like sections of time frame of the of the churches. But it even is so powerful that it exists in every city that we know of. Um, so you kind of go, whoa, okay, that's super, that's super layers. And it's, it's, it's like taking the onion skin, uh, I mean, the, the skins off of an onion. And that's what we're, we're doing, okay? Um, the text that many of us, if you're a little bit older, um, used to remember is the pages of, of the Bible were written almost in an onion skin and it has this distinctive sound to it. Oh, whoosh, you know, when you would move the pages with that too. There's pastors nowadays, I think Bill Johnson talks about it, that he kind of misses that, that onion skin sound of people flipping the Bible because, you know, they just pick up their iPad kind of thing and they, they flip to it with that too. So <clears throat> that's what I, that's what you got to see in here too. So 
we're going to kind of move some things around and we're going to flip over to this verse here. So you're going to see, you know, I want you to go do this right now. So I'm going to pause for a second or you guys can pause, but you can go get your Bibles and go and get to Second Chronicles 714. Now, um, you're going to see different versions. Some of it say, if my people, and uh, this one here is a Holman, and it says, and my people who are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their evil ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. Okay? So this dive into that one a tad and see where we come up with. Okay? Again, and my people humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from the evil ways. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their lands. Okay. Heal their land. By the way, lands is not effective. It is not lands. It is land. It's really, really important. Some people mess that one up. Okay. Is this an American verse? Now, what I have a lot of troubles is that when we, <coughs> excuse me, I have a lot of troubles when we take this and it's a pure American verse. And I would say yes and no. <clears throat> and, and let me talk a little bit about the yes and let me talk about the no. Firstly, no. Um, if we just cordon our mind off and said, is this, and let's roll up our sleeves a little bit and let's get into this. Is it, a, um, is it an American verse? Well, what if Afghanistan preached this particular verse? This is a very common statement that I have used quite a bit. So what if Afghanistan preached this verse throughout their, their situation? I mean, throughout their land. Would it be a valid verse for Afghanistan to preach? What if Indonesia did it? What if Thailand did it? And, and the answer is, it's a valid verse for every single um, people's group. You, you, you guys misunderstand when you think of it as a nation, because it's not even talking about nations. Many times we, we see in the word, especially like, for instance, in Ezekiel 38 and 39, <clears throat> and he's talking about different uh, areas like Gomer, and we think of Gomer as possibly Germany. But but remember, you know, the, the area of Gomer might be something very, a little different because the, the Germanic tribes of the time frame when um, maybe it was, what, 1700 uh, to 2300 um, BC kind of thing. I'm, I'm not, I'm blanking it out off the top of my head. So you guys are going to catch me, I'm sure. Um, but <clears throat> but anyway, it, it's it's long before Christ. The point is, is that um, Germany was just a whole bunch of, uh, of barbarian tribes. That's what they usually called them. And barbaric tribes with that too. And then when the Romans came up, you know, they tried to conquer the area. They actually did. And it was part of the, the northern uh, Germanic tribes with that too. And, they, and you know, the Romans kind of came in. So, you know, it, it looks different than it, it did in the, in back in the day with that. And so you have a different set of ideas that would come from that. And, and you know, many people want to extend the Bible into America. And the reality is there's very few verses that might have something to say about America. And, and we can get into that. And I actually talk about in my Ezekiel 38 and 39 war that you can actually get into in the Hope in the Last Day series. It's free to watch on, on my channel here with that too. Um, but is this just a verse for America? And the answer is no. But here's where it is a verse for America. Because when I, if you go back and watch my Hope in the Last Day series, you'll see I'm going to say emphatically, it is 100% not. And I'm going to share with you how I was wrong on that one viewpoint. Anyone who is an end time pastor, or an end, excuse me, more of an end time teacher, and comes up to 2020, this thing that, that has separated your mind from your bottom, 
uh, of the response of what's happened in the world. If you haven't paused a little bit and said, what is going on? I mean, this thing has messed you up. And many people have accelerated their mentality and said that, wait a second, uh, we're in the end times, you know, because they think we're, you know, we're, we're almost at World War III or they think we're in the second or the third seal and the fourth seal and they, they're teaching this kind of stuff. And I go, always go, you know, if we're in the fourth seal, what's the first seal? Uh, 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 we're, we're already in the beast system. No, you, you have to have an antichrist before you have the, the fourth seal. The antichrist is a man. Sorry, the Bible is very clear about this kind of stuff. And they get really sideways with me and they and they turn me off right then because their doctrine is more important to them than the word of god their interpretation is more important to them than the word and please don't do that because i have washed everything that i have every doctrine that i have in the word of god and you're going to see me do this over and over again. And I have, I have literally looked at things that I believed and, and washed them in the word. And you go, well, then you're just like a double-minded edge I mean, double minded kind of person. Well, maybe you might, might think that way. But that is a person who's growing. And that's actually a good thing. Don't you think that's, that's a person who's kind of learning that stuff? Do you know that math... Uh, that math uh, masters and PhD students who are doing their thesis and their uh, doctoral dissertations will actually go through math textbooks and find errors and they will use those and, and they will prove those theorems for their thesis or their doctoral dissertations. And it's just a very common thing that they will do, and they'll find the errors. And they will go back and, and they'll show their proof. And, the, and if they're right, boy, they, uh, they get their dissertation or, or, or thesis. And, and that's actually a great thing if we're checking ourselves. And see, we always talk about, you know, follow the science. And I'm going, yeah, but what if the science is wrong? If we if we're following our doctrine, but our doctrine is wrong, what are what are we centering ourselves on? We should we should be centering ourselves on the Word of God. Does that make sense? And and we should be washing ourselves in the Word. Well, where is that in the Bible? Uh, it's in John seventeen seventeen. Sanctify them, and sanctify them in your Word, for your Word is truth. What does that mean? That means go take a bath. In the Bible, sanctify means go take a bath. Bathe yourself in the word. And that's what I love doing, okay? So is that is this an American verse? Yes and no. Is it just a pure American verse that if we do this kind of stuff? But the reality is that from a Nasara Jasara kind of thing, and we will talk about this more as we go along, yes, but it is a world verse it is a national verse for every single american or and oh, excuse me every single national citizen and we're going to talk about that more as we go along here too so <clears throat> but let's talk about let me move my little cursor over here uh and make me smaller because we'll mess that up because you don't want to see me totally oops sorry actually will pull me up here makes it better okay so let me show you a little bit about the temple why am i talking about the temple because when you understand the context of what um of what solomon was talking about in second chronicles he's talking about the temple you see, you don't get to pull um, second. I mean, second Chronicles seven fourteen without asking what is he talking about. I have had people pull me out of context more times than I can count, and 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 they say, "Well, you said this," and I said, "No, I didn't say that." Yeah, you did. Did you listen to the context of the message? I mean, I was making a hyperbole or whatever that might be, and and, and they weren't listening to my message, right? And, and they weren't listening all the way through because sometimes you have to make a complicated message to explain it with that. Here's the thing. 
<clears throat> Solomon is actually complaining to the Lord <clears throat> because he just built this amazing temple. And he's like, God, I don't know what to do. These people make me crazy. I don't know what to do. And then, and then God goes, here's the Lord's response. And that's actually in verse 12. And, and he appears to him at night and he says, um, I've heard your prayer. I've chosen this place, um, this place of myself. This is the temple of sacrifice. If I, um, if I close the sky so there is no rain, or if there's a command of a grasshopper to consume the land, and if there's a pestilence on my people, and my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my faith. He's you're going, oh, well, that's a different set of consequences. Let's talk a little bit about what is the temple. So again, the Solomon temple is just finished. So we have the outer courts. This is where the Gentiles might come in. Okay. So these, the, the, the people could actually, people could walk through, could kind of walk in and see it. These are the outer gates kind of thing. <clears throat> it was the huge, it was so big, you know, that there were, there were building projects. I mean, most of them were tents, but Solomon was the first one to actually build it out. And no one had built it out in this way. And he had the wealth to do this. <clears throat> Solomon prayed for wisdom. And when he prayed for wisdom, God said, I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to give you finances to do this. And that's a really powerful thing. And, and you know, when we think about this, this point, <clears throat> and I want you to think about this Nasara Jasara stuff. Um, Nasara we have been praying for wisdom. Now, some of us have been praying for finances with this too, but I'm telling you what, we need wisdom. We need wisdom how to handle this because when these ugly Kabbalists are out of the way, we're going to be leading this circumstance, okay? Because the leaders, the idiot leaders are gone and you guys are going to be the leaders of this thing, okay? And I'm the teacher. I'm one of those teachers. Okay, I'm a truther teacher, and and I'm trying to I'm trying to prepare you. I'm trying to help you understand that, and you need to have the wisdom to be able to do that. But you also need to have the resources to do that. Guess what? You're. I mean, I'm a type of Solomon in that way, but you are too. You are a type of Solomon as well. And so he, he's preparing a new type of temple in in essence with that. And then after that, like I said, after that, Solomon prepares himself and he sets up the rules of the game. That's the background context with that too. Um, why can't it refer just to America? Again, what we said is this isn't just, you know, we're, we're not just talking about America with this. Um, we're, we're talking about a world. Um, this this has to be more to this than, than this. So it... it when we talk about um, my people, this is an Old Testament reference. Normally in the Old Testament, my people refers to the Jews. Now we're not talking, we're not going to get into much into the Kazarian Mafia, which is the many of the, the leaders of the Jews that are over there right now. We're talking about the real Jews. Okay, there are real Jews, the real people that will be leading and, and will be part of what I would call the remnant. And those people are there and they will be the leaders of the future with that too. So the other gross ones will be gone with that too. But this is, and we'll explain the end time reference out there with that too. Um, what does the Lord say to the nations? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you a little bit about this. Um, it, it, in the Old Testament, <clears throat> he doesn't speak to the nations very nicely. He doesn't speak to the nations and goes, you know what, I'm going to do really good things for you guys. You guys are going to be in great shape. You know, you're, 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 you're rocking. Um, no, he's going, you know, you're not going to have real good things happening for you. Um, but 
That, and that tells you that we're not in an end time situation, okay? If we're not in a crushing circumstance, and I know we, we feel like we feel what, like we are, and that's what, what a lot of people want to say, I would say we're in a type and shadow, and, and this is in March of 23. Um, we're in a type and shadow of, of an end time event. And by the way, there's types and shadows all over scripture. Um, John the Baptist was a type and shadow of, uh, of Ezekiel type and shadow. There's all kinds of types and shadows all over the Word of God. Okay. Why can America refer to this? Now, let's just think a little bit about these, and I just kind of laid them out here. So East Palestine event, so this is just a picture of the East Palestine event. I mean, we're just getting bombarded with stuff. Um, I mean, we're, we're getting all of these things that, that can happen in here. And, and but as America returns to the right ideals, when it it when the people call by their name, by his name, Christians, okay, that, that so this is the, the part of that middle middle part of that layer that can be related to us, okay? <clears throat> when they call to their name, humble themselves. They go, you know what? We can't do this on our own. That's what humble humbling yourselves mean. They pray and they seek his face. That means I, I just I, I'm looking to you. I don't have the answers. So many people are not doing that, but we're starting to see a return of this. They turn from their evil ways. By the way, what are some of those evil ways that we're seeing? We're seeing that evil turn away in the the you know the gross child trafficking stuff that we're saying uh, this is a video i just did here re very recently we're seeing some of that's purged from our our land and see what what it means is that i will forgive the sin when we purge from that stuff and i will heal the land and and what we're seeing some of the stuff so when you think about this kind of stuff and we're saying well how do we ever recover from this stuff that's radioactive and toxic god goes you know i can heal the land i i can fix this and and that's what we're talking about here too guys don't be so freaking out for, be freaking out about the stuff um it's super easy to freak out about it but you know what <clears throat> god can do major things i hear people that talk about med beds and these other alien kind of artifact points that you know that, that they're looking forward to and you know what i'm going you know what the word of god is the is the med bed t thing the word of god is the healing by his stripes we are healed and if you're focusing on those other things you're not focusing on the word focus on the word because that is what heals i'm sorry but that's the key that we really need to do. And when we have that kind of thing, we're gonna see the, he see the healing of the land. And we're gonna see that, that returning of that. We're gonna see a, a, a move of God that is so amazing with that. But it's only a type and shadow. We're not moving into the millennial reign of Christ. We're not in the tribulation. We're not in that, those, those circumstances. This is just a type and shadow of it. Now, let's go through the temple because if you guys don't catch the cool thing of, of the temple, you're missing it. I want you to see this because this is so powerful because if you don't know how to do this, if you don't know how to humble yourself and pray, seek his face, you don't get it. So let's just go through the temple. So <clears throat> we have the gate. We come into the brazen altar. This is where you would lay your sacrifice. That would be the death of Christ and our death. When it says that we die to Christ, we lay ourselves on the altar. Now, three years ago, push on three and a half, um, I, I nearly died in December. Some of you know my, my story with this. Okay, and I walked out of hospital in three and a half days. I, ha I had a near-death experience. And I keep, keep saying to people, you know, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Hey man, if you've had a near-death experience, 
to live as Christ, to die again. It's a pretty powerful statement, okay? I've said that in the past, but it has a different meaning to, to people who have nearly died. The world is going through their near-death experience and they're trying to hold on to it. And you guys keep, keep trying to bug me about like med beds because you want not to die. And God's going, don't worry about death. And you're going, no, 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 I got, no, 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 chill out. Because here's what, here's what happens. If you don't go through the, your own death and not be worried about it, and just go, you know what? I'm giving up myself because you're you're setting yourself on that altar with that. Sorry, that's what you need to do. Let me open myself up a little bit more here. Um, you have to lay yourself on that altar with that too. Now, after the priests would kill the fatted calf or whatever that, that, that particular altar point was, they would walk over to the laver. This is the water. And they would look into the water and what they would see is the reflection of themselves. They would see the grossness of their sin and the blood that was coming off of them. And they would, but they would wash themselves in the word. They would wash themselves clean of, of, their, of, of their sin. Um, that's what was happening. So they had the death on them and they would wash the death clean of them. That's and 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 so the <coughs> excuse me the priest was doing that. But remember, they don't get to, so the, see the Gentiles could, were on the outside of this thing, okay, and and they didn't get to even get into this point. These you have to even be a believer just to get into this point. So this is the believer point, okay. You have to believe to even get to this point. And then you, you lay yourself on the altar and then you wash yourself in that, in that situation. See, you're the high priest because, you know, Jesus, well, Jesus is the high priest, but you are priests. You, you guys don't understand. You're priests. You have that ability every day to do that. And before you even get into, see, so many people want to get into the worship and all the other stuff. You can't get into the worship. You got to humble yourself and pray and seek his face. And you got to turn from your evil ways before you got to do that stuff. And see, we're not always ready to do that. And, and by the way, everyone's got their own stuff. I've got my own evil ways. And I have to do this every day. And realize that, that Christ already killed it a long time ago. But just go through that process of killing yourself before you go into this little orange little thing here so i'm showing you a little orange point and you go into the and you see a couple things we're going to top start from the top area the golden table which is the bread of his presence so now you have the bread of his presence so you interact with the presence and that is the holy spirit the presence that is within you that sustains you, that presence that is keeping you connected. That's that connection point that happens. <coughs> Excuse me. The altar of incense. Now you need to smell it. Now, like I would do with, with an oil, and I was breathing in oils before this, because I, I would be really uh, coughing a lot. Those are the prayers of the people. You see, God can't even hear your prayer if you don't even offer up, you know, your sin. See, some people are just spending all their time in prayer, but they haven't really, they want to be prayer of his people. They, they want to go, hey, God, you know, listen to me, but they haven't really offered themselves up in that way. And, and they're not willing to. Well, guess what? You don't even get to this, the, the altar of incense, if you can't offer yourself up and see what you're, and, and look at the word. Sorry. That's the reality of this. And then we have the golden lampstand, which is the light. Uh, Jesus is the light. So we have the Holy Spirit and Jesus right sitting over here. And this is the, this is the smell of God. The altar of incense, I, I, I've smelled it one time. There was a time there was a, um, this was Rosh Hashanah of, of uh, 2008. 
And my wife and I went to this um, church. It was kind of a rounded church in the North Tulsa area. And we had helped someone moved. Uh, so so we we kind of came there a little bit late, you know, so we walk in, we were kind of a little bit sweaty and we were, you know, Wendy and I got in there and there was two women to the side of us. So we just kind of remember that a little bit. And um, we're listening to this this person talk. We didn't know the speakers at all. We knew some of the people in the group, in the crowd, because we kind of had been going to a parachurch type of thing um, with these people, some of these people. And um, he's talking about something in the Old Testament, and, and I don't remember off the top of my head, but he was talking about this, the, the incense of God and the power of God. And I'm smelling a burning of God. Now, it was a really cool burning. It was like the burning that you would smell in the woods, like a big uh, fire. And it was a great smell. Now, I'm thinking, okay, but we shouldn't be smelling that in a church because, you know, do we have something like burning? Like, do we need to get the fire department? And I lean over to my wife. I'm like, do you smell that? She goes, yeah. And I lean over to this woman over here. And I'm like, do you guys smell that too? And she goes, yeah. And I'm like, and I, so I asked some people in front behind and they kind of asked and, and no one else smells it other than the four of us. And we all look at each other like, okay, so that must be God something. Um, and no one else smelled it. And so we we're just like, oh, cool. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So we sat back down and just kind of didn't worry about it too much. Um, but that was the prayers of his people. Within a little bit of time frame, this woman who had a visitor's pass, she was walking around the people. She walks up to us and um and 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 she walks up to people and she's she's saying some prophecies over people and she says a prophecy over the lady beside me and it was kind of basic and she says something to me it's sort of basic and she walks over to wendy and she goes and she goes boom she says a statement that we had been praying in the car over and over again and it was specific to her and Wendy bursts into tears. Now, this woman looks like she just offended Wendy. And, and I'm like, and I'm almost bursting into tears too. And I'm and she's like, I, I, I'm sorry. And I'm like, just move along. You, you, you got the word from the Lord. Just move, move along. And and that was that was a powerful thing. And that was God saying, and it was a financial conversation. God saying, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm listening to you. We're going to fix that situation. Um, that's the altar of incense when we hear that and that was the father talking to us it wasn't the holy spirit and it wasn't jesus the son it was the father talking to us and a very rare instance where the father would actually talk to us in that way because of the of the way that incense ha happened now there is another area where there is a a curtain this curtain was rent because of what Jesus died and was washed in this. And he, when he did, uh, fulfilled all of this stuff, this thing was rent and it rents from the top to the bottom, okay? Or rips from the top to the bottom. And, and which, which this thing is like, you know, several inches thick. I mean, it would take, um, uh, a, a, you know, big, uh, big, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> big cattle, to rip it and so it, it, it's it's almost impossible to do that but it happened when jesus died on the cross and it's a separator and the priest when he would go the only the high priest would do it a couple times a year and he would actually have a little uh a, a little rope around his foot that if he dropped dead they could like rip him out of there you know with that if, if he was if he was in sin so this would be a very quiet place um, with this. So this would be the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant in there with the glory of God. And this is actually the destiny of the bride of Christ. This is your final destiny. It's in Revelation 22. Okay. So this is the cool place. And when you see this kind of thing, you're going, oh man, oh man. I, I you, you don't even see how cool this is. This is what Second Chronicles is talking about. This is what this is what he's talking about. Do, do you see? If you if you're not catching it, you're missing it. Sorry. 
So if my my people will now let's move forward to what this thing more specifically means for the future. If my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, let's give you this one. This is really cool. If my people, who are my his people? Well, who is who is Solomon talking about to the Lord? Well, he's talking about the Jews. Because this is Old Testament stuff. This is more specifically when we you're going to see this one too. This is not so again. We're talking about levels of this. Can it also be for people uh, for a group of people? By the way, Asbury Church uh, College, excuse me, Asbury College was doing this. They were humbling themselves. Very humble event, and this that whole place had a revival because they actually did Second Chronicles seven fourteen. In that church, in the town, was 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 humbling themselves, praying and seeking their faith, seeking his face. They were they were um, healing. They, they, it started with sin, um, confessing sin, <clears throat> and they're healing that that whole place. Oh my gosh! It can be that kind of a small thing. It can be from a national thing, like in the Nasara Jasara stuff. And I think that we're going to see some of that stuff. And, and you won't care about the medbed kind of stuff. But it can. But here's what we're gonna see in an end time issue, because the final, the real thing of this thing is going to be an end time issue, because the last point is going to be this at the very end of this, because you need to see the the final point of this. Okay, it's not fully fulfilled until we see what this is really about. So who has to humble themselves? The Jews. Seeking their face. The key, there's a key to this verse and how God is referring to it. They got to turn from their evil ways. Let's talk a little bit about this one. I'm going to pull up this one here. We're going to bring up, oops, sorry. Romans 7, 14. <clears throat> Some great verses, God, guys. You guys got to catch this one. Okay. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm not. Uh, but I am made out of flesh, sold into the into sin's power. For I do not understand what I am doing, because I do not practice what I want to do, but I hate. But I do what I hate. But if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. What? I know. Uh, so <clears throat> now I no longer am doing it, but it is sin living in, in me. For I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in the flesh. For the desire to do what is good is with me, but there is no ability to do it. For I do not do the good that I want to do, but I practice the evil that I do not want to do. Now, if I do what I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it, but it is the sin that lives in me. Whoa. It's like, <laughs> it's the sin in you. Okay. So I discover this principle. Oh, here's a principle. When I want to do good, oh, what? When I want to do good, evil is with me. For in my inner self, I joyfully agree with God's law, but, <clears throat> sorry, for 25, uh, 20, verse 23, but I see a different law in the parts of the body waging war against the law of my mind, taking me prisoner to the law of sin in the parts of my body. For what a wretched man am I who will rescue me from this dying body? Thank God through, the, through Christ Jesus our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself am a slave to the law of God, but with my flesh to the law of sin. Dude, here's what's going to happen. In the tribulation, 
they will build a temple. Are we if are we in the tribulation? No. Why aren't we in the tribulation? Because that temple has not been built. Now Solomon had a temple. But do we have a tribulation temple today? Can you go see it? Can you go walk through it? No. So we're not in the, in the tribulation. Sorry. Because the Antichrist has got to go desecrate that temple. And some people go, oh yeah, but the temple is within you and the desecrate. No, no. stop. He has to desecrate the temple. There has to be a temple. The Jews have to have a temple. There's a peace treaty that for the temple. Okay? Sorry. that There has to be an order to this. We have to fulfill the word of God. All scripture God breathe, the proof or teaching or proof. 2 Timothy 3.16. Man, if you want to strip away the, a lot of the Bible, go for it. But I'm not ready to do that. Okay? Here's the point. We're not in the, in the temple yet. But here's the thing. The Jews try to set up the laws of the world, and they realize that it's evil and because they can't do the evil. And so, so the Antichrist just comes in and starts messing with it. But they realize they have to turn from those evil ways because Satan just walks in there and just blows it all up. The tribulation is stripping away all that these people have left. And then we have those bold judgments and those seven bold judgments, I mean, they just rip everything to shreds. See, some people think that you're, they're going to make it all the way through the tribulation. I'm going to tell you that really, when you look at it very closely, it's worse than you ever imagined. <clears throat> There's probably a couple million people that will make it to the end. You're not going to make it to the end. You can't prep enough. I have proven that in my Hope in the Last Day series. Um, all the water will be will will uh, go to blood. Well, be better, excuse me. All the seas will go to blood. All the green grass will. First off, a third of the green grass will burn up. Uh, all the green grass will then all the green grass burns up. We have a uh, wormwood that uh, goes into the um, possibly into the ocean, reaches out. Into the fifth trumpet, we have a, what I call the murder trumpet or the zombie trumpet, and they go around and sting people, um, those who don't take the mark of the beast, and they can't die for five months. And don't think that if you can't die for five months, you don't walk around and looking like zombies because you're going to want to try to die because it says you want you want to die but you can't die for five months, and they don't look like they don't have like gunshots and everything else in their body. And then the sixth trumpet is um, another nuclear war because that probably would be maybe World War IV. I don't pick pick your number of wars. And that goes on for twelve months. That as many as one point two billion die. We have um, uh, the the sun layer stripped away, and we have burn burns on every single person. There's boils on everyone. I mean, you're talking about everyone nearly dying. And it says in um, in Matthew 24, and I'm blanking out exactly the, the reference. I think it's, I want to say it's Revel <coughs> Matthew 24, 30. Basically, if we don't limit the days, no flesh would survive. Guys, you ain't going to survive. Um, the Jews are going to be down to the last third of them. The last third, that's called the remnant. Okay, So if they turn from their evil ways... I will forgive them. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin. Now, here's the fascinating part here, guys. <clears throat> How do they hear from heaven? Here's what happens. Rosh Hashanah, which is in Revelation 14.14. 14. There's an actually interesting part that, that gets people really, really confused. <clears throat> Jesus, there, there's two different parts. We have... Revelation 14, 15, Revelation 14, 17, where we have a messenger angels <coughs> that are from the closed up parts of heaven. And they show up and they have a sickle in their hand. You see that little sickle thing? Sorry, the sickle thing right here. And they got a sickle and they're trying to cut away the grapes. Okay. Um, 
But then we have the Son of Man who's got a crown on his head and he has a sickle in his hand too. And you're going, but but that's a Revelation 14, 14, Revelation 14, 16. You got two different entities going on here and, and it's confusing. And we, we don't spend enough time to slow down in those verses. The ones who are angels are taking the bad ones and stomping them in to the wine press of the wrath of the Lamb. What do you do with grapes? You, you do two different things. Number one, you stomp them into wine. But number two, you also take them just like you have here and, and use them for grapes. Well, guess what? You also are going to see grapes, which I would believe is the last rapture. Now, if you get into my teaching in the Hope of the Last Day series, you're going to see a last rapture, a, set, a third rapture event. I know you're going to be freaking out about that when you're going, ah! I know, chill out. Go watch my whole series. You'll see it. You'll make sense. Okay. Um, but but it makes sense. There's and, and this Rosh Hashanah event is at the end of the tribulation, the last 10 days. Jesus shows up on that planet and he's taking away. But they see him in the clouds. We also see references of this, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, but they don't say Jesus is Lord and Savior. They all say he is Lord, but they don't say he is Lord and Savior. Thomas says, you are my God and you are my Lord. That's the Lord and Savior. But here... And when we see this this other reference that we've seen in, in the epistles and in the gospels, we see um, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord, is everyone going, you know what, you're God. That's it. But doesn't mean that they're confessing him as their savior. Because when they see him in the clouds, Rosh Hashanah, he's got a crown on his head. It means he's crowned king. And you only get crowned on your, at king when you're married to your bride. You can read about that one later. But they, I, then I will hear them from heaven. So they're looking up in the clouds. I want you to sit back for a second. The Jews are looking up, seeing them in the clouds. Because it says, <clears throat> And my people will humble, oh, let me just sit here. And my people will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, um, seek my face. Wait a second. Hum it doesn't just say humble my humble themselves. Pray. Seek my face. Look, they look up. Do you catch that point? They're gonna see him in the clouds. This is where we believe the remnant come to a acceptance of Jesus. It's so powerful. It's so cool. This is a, a quick a believing of Jesus. Now, I also believe that the nations, that the nations, the rem, I mean, these, these are also the nation, the sheep nations will also, there's a very small group of them that will go into the millennial reign. These are the last level of people, a very small group of people who will also go in the millennial reign. And they're separated with the sheep and the goats. The goats are the bad ones. The sheep will go into the into the tribula or into the millennial reign. And that's not you and me. We're not we're not sheep. God thinks of us as the bride. We have a different destiny. But the sheep and the remnant go into the millennial reign because you and I are ruling and reigning with Christ. They got a different destiny. Okay. Who and what needs healing? It says a really interesting statement. It says that they will heal, it will heal the people and it will heal their land. Why does it say heal their land? Well, remember we talked about healing Nasara and we said healing their land. Well, we need a healing of the land, right? Because we talked about the East Palestine and other things that so we need some healing now. So we have a healing need of, their, of that now. Let me move that, sorry. Let me move that right there and make me a little smaller. Well, you get the idea. Um, and 
and you see, need a <coughs> healing right now, right? So we need the East Palestine healing. So we need some of that stuff. But when the Jews come to Jesus, when all the Jews, the last of the remnant, the last one third come to Jesus, this group of people, when they come, the whole earth is healed. I'm telling you what, when the, when the Holocaust ended and they came into, um, in, into the Palestine area, which is now Israel, um, that land was healed in mighty ways. I mean, it was growing seasons are amazing in Israel. I mean, and that was just a desolate area. Think of what happens when they, when they ask for forgiveness. My, and my people, when the Jews really come into that understanding and they sign that marriage contract again and they come into that this desolate land of the earth. And by the way, at the end of the tribulation, I mean, everything is desolated. All the mountains come down. All the valleys are just made low. I mean, the, I mean, we just have tsunamis, earthquakes. Earthquakes will just knock us for a loop. There's nothing left. Again, you guys think that you're going to make it all the way through the tribulation. You, you have no idea. There's so few that will actually make it. And they will be skeletons, just like the, that were made through the, the um, Holocaust thing. Skeletons. Don't wish you're, you're, you're going to make it through in that way. That's not, your, that's not your destiny. God would not want you to be in that kind of situation. Okay? Um, but the, the reality is, is that he's going to like heal the land <clears throat> in this way. And he's going to heal that. And by the way, do you know that, that um, Israel will be raised up about 1,500 feet? It's a real interesting point. Okay. So... Um, the Jews come to Jesus. Well, that comes in Hosea uh, 1.10. Isaiah 10, 22 and 23. Romans 11, 25. Well, let's just read that. A partial hardening of the heart has come to Israel until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. Now, I know that we talk about this in other ways that, you know, that, that other people talk about how we are the Jews. Well, we are not really, we're part of the bride of Christ. So I know a lot of the people have different disagreements on this, but we are the bride of Christ with that. So that's, we have a different destiny and we get separated out in the destiny. But it, you know what? In the reality, in the final end, we all become the bride of Christ with that too. So today we are going to have, so the, again, there's, there's, an, there's, three different levels of this okay you could heal your land or heal like asbury church or asbury college is actually healing themselves and by by confessing their sin that can happen today each of the nations can come to that through that nasara jasara kind of thing but it's going to happen it's going to happen by this by in your heart kind of stuff <clears throat> and we're going to see that for a time frame of that Nasara Jasara healing their land with this. But ultimately down the road, we're going to see the whole planet do this in the millennial reign when the Jews come to that understanding with that. So I hope you see, and we're just talking one verse. I mean, I see people, and I get almost apoplectic guys, that I see people that want to talk about, and we're just talking about the 66 books here, and people want to get into like, you know, all these 777 books, and I'm like, stop it. I just did one tiny verse, one tiny verse in the Old Testament. And then I threw out like some, some parts in Romans 7. Man, how come you're not spending time in those areas? Do you see how much I, I, I can get lost in verses? That's the stuff. That, that you've been you've been missing. You think that someone stole something from you? That's what you've been stolen from. You need to get into that stuff and be excited about that kind of stuff. Sorry, let me pull out that little bit. 
You need to be excited about that because when you're excited about this, this is what can happen. This kind of stuff is down the road, but this is the kind of stuff that can happen. You can see our land and yourself healed, but it's not going to happen if you can't get into the word. Humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your evil ways. It's pretty simple, guys. Do you want to do that? If you want to do that, email me or you know leave a message up here. Guys, it's, it's all available for you. I appreciate you listening to me. Like and subscribe. Share this video too, but really subscribe. It helps me out with that too. So thanks so much.